My name is Stephen Godfrey, and uh, I have the very good fortune of being the curator of paleontology at the Calvert Marine Museum. So it was a Friday afternoon. I was expecting to uh, leave the museum to go home for a uh, more or less relaxing weekend. <laughs> and I got a phone call from uh, Cody Goddard uh, telling me about uh, what he thought was a fossil whale skull that he had discovered along Calvert Cliffs, not far from, uh, from Mattawaka. I found the skull around two o'clock on a Friday afternoon. We were gonna be leaving by Sunday. So I was on the beach looking at the Marine Museum's paleontology directory, calling every number until someone picked up. And uh, I had recorded a short video showing everything that I thought was significant in the find that identified it to me as being a cetacean skull. He said that he had a video that he could send to me and so he sent it and it was a superbly well done a video of um, showing me the, the block of sediment, which was about five and a half feet long, on the beach. It had fallen from the cliffs. And um, although most of the bone of the skull was covered by the sediment in which it had been entombed, uh, there was bone protruding, uh, showing at both ends of this giant block on the beach. And it was indeed what he thought it was. Uh, when I looked at the video, it was obvious to me that, yes, indeed, this is a fossilized whale skull. Um, so I sent him the video and, uh, you know, within two hours they were there to look at it. We thought maybe we would be able to collect it right, right away that afternoon. And uh, when we got out there and tried to lift this specimen, we realized that it was way beyond us. We calculated that it weighed about 650 pounds. And so we knew that there was no way we were going to take it out that Friday afternoon. Fortunately, uh, because it was in this really hardened sediment, we weren't concerned about waves just destroying it. And so we kind of covered up those parts of the skull that were showing. And then uh, we proceeded to try to figure out a way of removing it from where it was on the beach back to the museum. It took two months for us to finally decide that we had to move this skull on our own. We couldn't rely on a helicopter. The, the price of uh, a barge coming in was more than we wanted to pay. So it was like, okay, we're just gonna like man lift this thing. When they finally decided they were gonna recover it by boat, I decided that I was gonna take a trip down and help with that. So in December, uh, I drove down and stayed overnight and uh, I bought a new pair of waders so that I could go out in the water and helped with the recovery. We had the, the appropriate kind of fabric gurney that had these loops on it. And as you saw in the field, we were able to slot these two by fours through it. And so we had a team of uh, like a dozen people, right, to help lift this thing and get it into, to, into the pontoon boat that was so generously uh, brought to the site by Walt Johns, who is our like go-to guy for, for boating anywhere we want to go that we can get to by water. Then the boat took it to a public uh, boat launch where we lifted it into a pickup truck and then drove it to the museum and we lifted it onto a table and then down into the paleo lab where it is today. The process of removing that sediment that's encasing the skull uh, has already begun at the museum. There are two volunteers, uh, well, one intern and one a longtime volunteer who are presently working on preparing that skull. Um, Krista Conant is one of our longtime volunteers in the Department of Paleontology, and she's very good at preparing fossils and show. So she's taken an interest in using this air scribe. It's like a, um, a handheld miniature jackhammer with a very hard tip on it, a very pointed tip. And uh, it basically reciprocates, goes in and out very quickly, and what it does is it kind of buzzes into the sediment and it pops away. And when it gets down close to the bone, the sediment will just pop away from the bone. Uh, there's nice separation between the two. And also Marcus Jones, who again was out, who was with us that day and helped us move the skull from, from the beach uh, to the museum. And so he is uh, very keen on pursuing paleontology professionally. He's a senior in high school and a very promising uh, prospect uh, for a future paleontologist. And so both of them are working kind of tag team at different on different days uh, of the week, uh, removing the, the in indurated sediment from around the fossil whale skull. And they've already exposed like about that much of the bone uh, of the skull. And so I'm very happy to see that because I think that means that uh, the process of preparation won't take as long as I originally anticipated. Uh, they've told me that this is the only whale skull they know of that's been uh, recovered in this area that isn't uh, flattened. It actually has its original shape. A lot of the time when these skulls were to like land on the ocean floor and then cover with sediment, 
uh, the weight of the sediment would completely crush them flat. So the two other really large whale skulls that are on display in the museum right now are both fragmented and pancaked. So all of the uh, bones that make up the structure of the skull are broken into pieces that are all then compressed flat. Every species uh, of vertebrate, animals with, with skeletons, has a different pattern of bones in their skulls. And that applies to this baleen whale as well. And so once we get the, the bones on the top part of the skull exposed, we're going to be able to look at that pattern and compare it with known kinds of fossil baleen whales that have been found in this area and elsewhere in the world and determine, is it uh, a kind of baleen whale, a species that has already been described, or there's a slight chance that this represents a new kind of baleen whale that has never been described anywhere else in the world. And that would be fabulous, of course. So who owns the skull is an interesting question. And uh, I'm not sure ownership of it is particularly well defined, but uh, just to cover all our bases, I have signed ownership over to the museum. I have officially donated the skull that I found. I am still fossil hunting. I'm actually planning to go out later today and uh, see if I can find anything. I never imagined I would find anything this exciting to begin with. I, I don't know that I would dare to hope to find anything more exciting, but uh, any day you're out there and finding something interesting is a good day.